So you've been developing a multiplayer game, and it was going great, until you decided to test it out over the web and now your router is giving you trouble. It's not the 90s, so you can't expect your players to deal with port forwarding. And when you try to Google a solution, you're only met with results suggesting things like Steam's network and API, NAT punch throughs, and relay servers. And each of these solutions require a lot of extra work, and even money, that you probably didn't take into consideration. It can be very discouraging and perhaps a little confusing because it feels like it really should not be this difficult. Like do all these little apps and games really go through all of this to get their users connected? Well, it turns out there's a much easier way to go about things. Modern routers have something called universal plug and play. And it does exactly what you need. It allows applications to forward ports. Godot allows you to easily take advantage of this with its UPnP class. Now, if you Google universal plug and play, you'll come across a lot of posts talking about how it puts your computer at risk because malware can take advantage of it. And they're probably right, but it's already enabled by default on the majority of home routers and your game isn't going to increase that risk. So to use UPnP with Godot, you first create a UPnP object. Then you call discover on it. This searches your local network for devices with ports that can be forwarded. It takes three arguments. The first is the amount of time to search for. The next is the time to live. The documentation says you probably shouldn't mess with this. And the filter which is set to internet gateway by default. You could probably actually leave all these arguments at their defaults and it'll work just fine. This function will also return a result that can be checked against the UPnP result enumerator. Next, you can use get gateway to return the first device that's also an internet gateway that was discovered. And you can call is valid gateway on that to make sure that it's a valid gateway for port forwarding. And now we can start forwarding ports. This is done by calling add port mapping. The first argument is the external port to use on your router. The second is the internal port on the computer running the server. If the internal port is set to zero, it will use the same port as the first argument. Next, there is a string argument that takes a description that will appear on your router for this port forwarding rule. Port forwarding on some routers might not work if you use a description, and it doesn't seem to work on my router if I don't use a description. So it's best to have your code check the port mapping result and try both with and without one. The next argument determines the protocol to use when transmitting data. This is either UDP or TCP. Unreliable calls are made using UDP and reliable using TCP. You will most likely want a port mapping for both. The fifth argument is the duration or how long you want this port forwarding rule to last on your router. Setting this to zero will forward the port indefinitely. The forwarding rule will only be removed when you manually delete the mapping. Like the description, this might not be compatible with all routers, so it's good to have fallback logic here as well. When it's time for the server to be shut down, you can call delete port mapping. This takes two arguments, one for the port number and one for the protocol. The last function you'll need is query external address. This returns the internet facing IP address of your router, and it's the address that clients will need to connect to. Hopefully this video will save you some trouble. If there's a topic that you'd like me to cover, leave it in a comment below, and thanks for watching.